The 1972 World Series matched the American League champion Oakland Athletics against the National League champion Cincinnati Reds, with the Athletics winning in seven games. It was the first World Series win for the A's in 42 years, since 1930. These two teams met again in the World Series 18 years later in 1990. Topic. Background The A's won the American League West Division by five and a half games over the Chicago White Sox, then defeated the Detroit Tigers three games to two in the American League Championship Series. The Cincinnati Reds won the National League West Division by ten and a half games over both the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Houston Astros. The Reds dethroned the defending World Series champion Pittsburgh Pirates three games to two in the National League Championship Series, marking the first year in which an LCS series in either league went the full five games since divisional play was introduced in 1969. The Reds 95 to 59 .617 won one less game than the Pirates 96 to 59 .619 during the strike reduced regular season and became the first team in MLB history to reach the World Series without having the best record in its respective league. In each of the first six league championship series, the team with the better record advanced to the World Series. The A's had the best record in the American League in 1972, but the Al Pennant winner the next three seasons did not. This was Cincinnati's second trip to the World Series in three years, previously falling to Baltimore in five games in 1970. It was Oakland's first ever trip to the series, and the first for the franchise since 1931, when the team was located in Philadelphia. This was a matchup of the two premier MLB dynasties of the 1970s, with the Reds winning two World Series (1975–76) in four WS appearances, while the A's won three straight (1972–74). Iconoclastic club owner Charlie Finley's Swing and A's featured day glow uniforms, white shoes, lots of facial hair, colorful nicknames, and explosive personalities, while the Big Red Machine was a more traditional franchise with a more traditional look, including a facial hair ban and an everyday lineup with multiple future Hall of Famers as well as all-time hits King, Pete Rose. The series was dubbed, The Hairs vs. The Squares. Oakland played the series without its star outfielder Reggie Jackson, who was injured pulled hamstring, stealing home in the second inning of the final game of the ALCS at Detroit on October 12. Left-handed reliever Darrell Knowles was also missing for the A's, breaking his thumb on September 27, less than three weeks before the series opener. With Jackson out, the Athletics were decided underdogs. George Hendrick was inserted into center field for Jackson. And while Hendrick only went 2 for 15.133 AVG, unheralded catcher Gene Tennis stepped up. Tennis had a poor regular season, hitting only .225 with five home runs. He was even worse in the AL Championship Series against Detroit, going 1 for 17 .059, although his one hit drove in the go-ahead run in Game 5. In the World Series however, tennis was spectacular, hitting four home runs equaling the World Series mark set by Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Hank Bauer. He also had nine RBI in the series—no other Oakland player had more than one. Tennis was voted World Series MVP. 
By contrast, the stellar Oakland pitching kept the middle of the Reds lineup quiet for most of the series. Johnny Bench .270 AVG, 40 HR, 125 RBI, NIMVP, Tony Perez .283 AVG, 21 HR, 90 RBI, and Dennis Menke 9 HR, 50 RBI, combined for only two homers and five RBI the entire series. It didn't help that the Reds' table setters Pete Rose and Joe Morgan were a combined 1 for 28 through the first four games, when the Reds lost three of those games. The teams were fairly equal statistically, each club totaling 46 hits with the same .209 batting average the combined batting averages were the lowest recorded in a seven-game World Series. The Reds outscored the A's by five runs, 21–16, but all four of their losses were by a single run. Six of the seven games in the series were decided by one run, marking perhaps the most closely contested World Series in history. There were five one-run games in 1991, with three going to extra innings, including Game 7. Topic. Summary Al Oakland A's vs. NI Cincinnati Reds 3. Postponed from October 17 due to rain Matchups Game 1 Oakland jumped out to a one-game series lead behind catcher Gene Tennis, who hit a home run in each of his first two at-bats. Tennis became the first player ever to homer in his two initial series plate appearances, a feat later matched by Andrew Jones of the Atlanta Braves in 1996. Only two Oakland players collected hits, a pair each from Tennis and Bert Campanaris. The A's received a combined four innings of shutout relief from Rolly Fingers and Vida Blue to secure the victory for starter Ken Holtzman. Blue stranded the potential tying run at third base to end the game by inducing Pete Rose to ground out to second base. Game 2 The Game 2 hero was A's left fielder Joe Rudy, who smacked a home run and added a sparkling, game-saving catch-up against the wall in the ninth inning on a ball hit by Dennis Menke. Catfish Hunter pitched eight strong innings, consistently wiggling out of trouble, and also added an RBI single in the second off Ross Grimsley. The Reds' failure to produce in the clutch was as much the story as Rudy's heroics as Cincinnati had led off baserunners in five innings but only scored a run in the ninth. In the ninth, Tony Perez led off with a base hit before Rudy's catch of Menke's drive for the first out. Oakland first baseman Mike Hegan then made another great defensive play when Cesar Geronimo, the next Reds hitter, lined a shot that appeared headed down the line for extra bases. Hegan dove for the ball, knocked it down, and dove for the bag, barely beating Geronimo. Perez took second and scored on a Hal McRae single through the middle. Rolly Fingers then relieved Hunter and induced pinch hitter Julian Javier to pop out to Hegan in foul territory to end the game. The World Series home loss was red seventh straight, which included three in the 1961 World Series against the New York Yankees at Crossley Field and two in the 1970 World Series against the Baltimore Orioles. Jackie Robinson, the first black major league player of the modern era, made his final public appearance in Cincinnati before Game 2 he died nine days later. 
In a brief speech, he expressed his desire to see a black manager in Major League Baseball, a color barrier that had not yet been broken. Two years later, Frank Robinson was hired in October 1974 to manage the Cleveland Indians to break that barrier. Game 3 Heavy storms delayed Game 3 by a day, but the Reds got back into the series behind a strong performance from starter Jack Billingham, who held the A's to three hits in eight innings. The Reds pushed across the game's only run in the seventh when Cesar Geronimo singled home Tony Perez. Perez scored despite slipping on the still damp grass as he rounded third. Oakland shortstop Bert Campanaris was apparently unaware that Perez had slipped, otherwise, it appeared Campanaris may have had a play at the plate. Clay Carroll pitched the ninth for the save. A rare trick play occurred in the eighth inning. The Reds had Joe Morgan on third and Bobby Tolan on first base with Raleigh Fingers pitching to NIMVP Johnny Bench. Fingers pitched carefully to bench before Tolan stole second base on ball three. After the stolen base, with the count 3–2 on bench, A's manager Dick Williams visited the mound. After a long discussion, he motioned for an intentional walk to bench. A's catcher Gene Tennis stood to catch ball four, but at the last second returned to his crouch as Fingers delivered a strike on the outside corner. Bench watched the pitch go by for strike three. <laughs> Game four A very pivotal game in the series, and it was Gene Tennis and Oakland non-starters who came through in the ninth inning to rally the Athletics to victory to put the A's up three games to one. Oakland left-handed starting pitcher Ken Holtzman shut out the Reds on four hits through seven innings and had a 1–0 lead behind Tenassa's third homer of the series. With two outs in the eighth inning and Dave Concepcion on second base, A's manager Dick Williams brought in left-hander Vida Blue to face left-handed hitters Joe Morgan and Bobby Tolan. But Blue walked Morgan and allowed a clutch two-run double to Tolan, giving Cincinnati the lead as the Reds seemed poised to tie the series at two games apiece. In the bottom of the ninth, however, with one out, the A's strung together four consecutive hits to score two runs. Pinch hitter Gonzalo Marquez singled, Tennis followed with a single, Don Mincher followed with another pinch hit single scoring pinch runner Alan Lewis to tie the game before a third pinch hitter, Angel Mangwell, singled off Clay Carroll to score Tennis with the game winner to put Oakland up three games to one. It was the first time that a team collected three pinch hits in the same World Series inning. <laughs> Game 5 Up three games to one and with ace Catfish Hunter on the mound, the A's looked to close out Cincinnati. What made the Reds' outlook worse was ace pitcher Gary Nolan, who had been battling shoulder and neck issues during the regular season, was unable to pitch Game 5, forcing Reds manager Sparky Anderson to pitch part-time starter Jim McLaughlin instead. But the Reds got a home run by Pete Rose to lead off the game. Rose would also drive in the game winner in the ninth. The dramatic game ended when Joe Morgan threw out the potential game-tying run at the plate as the Reds staved off elimination, trailing 1–0 in the second. Gene Tennis hit his fourth home run of the series, a three-run shot, to put Oakland up by two. McLaughlin was removed after pitching just three innings. The Reds cut the lead to 3–2 in the fourth on a home run by Dennis Menke. Angel Mangwell put the A's back in front by two runs with a pinch-hit RBI single in the fourth. 
The Reds continued to answer. With two outs in the fifth, Joe Morgan walked. With a 3–2 count on Bobby Tolan, Morgan broke for second and was able to score when Tolan lined a base hit into right center field. The speedy Morgan and Tolan collaborated once again in the eighth. Morgan again walked, stole second and scored on another Tolan single to tie the game at four. In the ninth, Rose singled in the go-ahead run. The Reds preserved the lead when, with one out and runners on first and third, Bert Campanaris hit a foul pop on the first base side that first baseman Tony Perez appeared to call. Second baseman Morgan raced over, waved Perez off, caught the ball, slipped on the grass but got up and fired a throw to nail pinch runner Blue Moon Odom, who had tagged from third. The Friday afternoon contest was the last non-weekend World Series day game. The three games in Oakland had all been scheduled to be played at night, but Game 3 was rained out, forcing Game 5 to be played on a Friday, originally scheduled as a travel day. The game was played in the afternoon 1 p.m. Pacific time to allow ample time for the teams to travel to Cincinnati for Game 6 the next day. Game 6 Back at the friendly confines of Riverfront Stadium, the Reds tied the series at three games apiece with a rout. Johnny Bench, who had no RBI in the series to that point, broke a scoreless tie in the fourth with a homer off starter Vida Blue. The A's fought back on a Dick Green RBI double in their half of the fifth, but from then on it was all Reds. Dave Concepcion had a sacrifice fly in the fifth, and Tony Perez an RBI single in the sixth his first RBI of the series. The Reds then broke it open with a five-run seventh and RBI single by Joe Morgan and a pair of two-run singles by Bobby Tolan and Cesar Geronimo. Game 7 Gene Tennis capped a spectacular World Series with two hits, two RBI and he also scored the game-winning run in the sixth inning on Sal Bando's double. Oakland scored an unearned run in the first inning off Jack Billingham when Reds center fielder Bobby Tolan misplayed a fly ball by Mangwell into a three-base error. Mangwell scored on a two-out infield single by Tennis on a ball that hit a seam in the AstroTurf and bounced over the head of third baseman Dennis Menke. The Reds tied the game in the fifth on a bases-loaded sacrifice fly to the center field wall by Hal McRae. However, McRae was pinch-hitting for Billingham who had allowed no earned runs in 13 and two-thirds innings in the series against the A's. His replacement in the sixth inning, Pedro Bourbon, surrendered RBI doubles to Tennis and Bando. Bando's drive appeared catchable, but Tolan pulled up short of the wall due to a strained hamstring and the ball went over Tolan to the base of the wall. He was later removed from the game on a double switch. The Reds closed to within 3–2 in the eighth on a sacrifice fly by Perez, but A's closer Raleigh Fingers shut down the Reds in the ninth. The World Series victory for the Oakland A's was the first for the franchise since the days of Connie Mack when the team was in Philadelphia and had won in 1930. The victory ensured manager Dick Williams' return for another year. It was the Athletics' sixth World Series title, and the first of three consecutive titles. This was the last time to date that an American League team had won a World Series Game 7 on the road until 2017, when the Houston Astros did so in Los Angeles. <laughs> Composite box. 
1972 World Series 4 to 3 Oakland A's AL over Cincinnati Reds NL Source Topic Radio and Television This was Al Michaels' first World Series as a play-by-play -play man, he was then a broadcaster for the Cincinnati Reds. At the time, Major League Baseball and NBC had a policy which ended in 1977 in which announcers from the participating World Series teams were allowed to commentate on the national television and radio broadcasts. Michaels would not call another World Series until 1979, after he had joined ABC Sports. Topic Notes. Topic See also. 1972 Japan Series